Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose's Year of One. I said to you in my last video that my September Empties was going to be a super exciting one. I feel like last month was just when a lot of things that had been so nearly done for a really long time all just sort of seemed to come together at once. Let's get into what I've used up in the month of September. <laughs> Let's blitz through hair care first because I feel like I've probably got the least to say about any of these products. I used one sachet sample, it's the L'Oreal Botanicals the Lavender Shampoo. It was fine, I don't actually love the smell of lavender, but I got through it, I used it. It didn't seem to irritate me, which lavender sometimes can do, but I definitely wouldn't repurchase it, but that is $1 towards my reverse rouge. Post shampoo products, I've got two conditioners that finally got finished this month. So the mini one from a brand called Number 4. I think I got this in the Birchbox shop in New York the last time I was there. A volumising conditioner, so it was quite lightweight, it didn't weigh my hair down, but it was just absolutely fine. I wouldn't repurchase it, but if I got it again, I would finish it again. And then the other conditioner, sorry, I should have said the Number 4 one was worth $4 towards my reverse rouge. This conditioner was worth $58 towards my reverse rouge. It's the Shuomura Again, the volume conditioner. Most of my hair products, as I'm sure you will have noticed, are volume-based products. Again, this was fine. Um, I did actually quite like it, but at $58 for the conditioner, I just don't foresee me ever repurchasing this. If somebody got me as a gift, I would use it up again, but I feel like there are other products that I do actually like better at a lower price point anyway. It's not that I wouldn't repurchase this purely because of the price point. There are other products that I like better, but it was fine and I would use it up again if somebody bought it for me, but there is absolutely no way I would spend this kind of money again on this product. The fourth product is this. It's from a brand called Grow Gorgeous and this is their hair growth serum. So it's a little pipette, you drop the drops into your scalp, like at the root of your hair, massage them in. I don't know, I feel like my hair has just kind of got to a point where it won't get any longer and it's starting to really irritate me. But I can't say I found using these drops made much of a difference. Having said that, they are very much expired. I had these before my first no buy started, which for beauty was in 2018. So they're definitely expired. The other thing is I just didn't probably use them consistently enough. When I sort of decided to finish them, so you can see I had marked them, and I believe that was at the start of 2021. I tried then to be really quite consistent about using this, but I still couldn't tell you that I used it every day. I didn't see enough of a result from how I did use it to want to repurchase this serum but that may have been me as much as the serum. However, it is now done and it gives me another $39 towards my reverse rouge. And then the last two products are the same. Two boxes of the Clairol Nice and Easy um, Hair Dye in the shade 8WR Golden Auburn. I don't think this is quite the right colour for me. It sort of I think it's a bit lighter than what I'm actually looking for. It doesn't make my roots match to the rest of my hair, if that makes sense, in terms of like the last time I got it done at the hairdressers was in July. Then I used this in between because I'm trying, obviously, from a budget point of view to cut down the amount of time that I go to my actual hairdresser. So I used this in between, but it wasn't quite the right colour. However, in terms of ease of use, etc., absolutely fine. You know, and this is the colouring back. It's not copper enough for me. I don't think it's the right colour at all. But in terms of ease, ease of use, I like to, I would buy more from this range, just maybe not this colour again. They were worth $5 each, so that gave me another $10 between the two of them. So that is six products worth $112 towards my reverse rouge total. Moving on to makeup products. So, first of all, if you watched my last video, which was my Project Pan update, you already know about this primer. I'll just hold the bottom bit because that's the bit that's got the information on it anyway. And it's the Hylamide HA Blur. So you could use it as a finisher or a primer. I kind of used it both ways, but mainly as a primer. And this was worth $19 towards my reverse rouge. When I was super oily, which I was when I first went on my Beauty No Buy, this was like my favourite primer. It's so super mattifying. If you're super oily, this is brilliant. However, my skin has changed a little bit since 2018. I'm still on the oily side, just not quite as much. So by the time I was done with this, I did feel that it left me really feeling 
quite extremely mattified. Or maybe it's not even that I'm not as oily anymore, but that my preference has just changed. I still don't want to look like an oil slick, but I'm not quite as fussed about being super matte. So I feel like I won't repurchase this. I don't feel like this is what I'm looking for anymore, but it was absolutely brilliant at doing what it said in the tin. So if you're super oily and you want to be super matte, highly recommend this primer for that purpose. Moving on from primer, I finished my NARS Sheer Glow. So this was worth $47 towards my reverse rouge. I know this doesn't look very finished, but I promise you it actually is. I've scraped the sides as much as I could. You can kind of see in the inside there is there is no product left that is able to get out. So yeah. I have fully finished this foundation. I did really like it. I found towards the end the formula had changed and I didn't like it quite as much, but that's absolutely my fault because, again, this is another product that I had going into my first Beauty No Buy, which was in 2018, and it wasn't a new product in my collection at that time. So it was definitely one of the older products that I had in my possession. Just it had its life. I wouldn't let that put me off repurchasing it. I would definitely repurchase it, but it definitely made me very aware of why we need to use things up within a reasonable time. I don't feel like... So the expiration date, as you can see in the bottom there, is 24 months. And I don't feel that you necessarily only get exactly what the expiration date says out of things. Like, I obviously definitely have and use things way past their expiration dates, but it does just make me very aware of why I should be trying to use things up, have a smaller collection, and be able to actually get things, get through things before they expire because they have an expiration date for a reason. It is a guideline in my opinion rather than a rule. I go by formula, texture, smell, etc. But at the end of the day, makeup is perishable. You can't keep it forever. Have less of it, use it up. That is my aim going forward. A base product that I used up was this little sample that I had of the RCMA no colour powder, so as you can see it is completely finished. I didn't actually know the value or anything of this, so I just had it in my inventory as $5, so we're counting it's $5 towards my reverse rouge. I like this powder, but I don't think I would go out of my way to repurchase it. I've got loads of powders still to get through. As I said, in terms of like when I was talking about that primer, I feel like my preference has just changed in terms of how matte I like my skin, so I just am not going through powder as quickly as I used to. I did like this one. If I got it again, I would use it up again, but I don't think I would rush to repurchase it myself. The last full-size product I've used up is this Fresh Sugar Lip Balm, which is worth $26 towards my reverse rouge total. Um, I actually did really, really like using this, but overall I definitely prefer a lip balm that's in a tube or a stick format rather than something I have to use with my fingers. So I feel like I would repurchase a fresh lip balm, but I would probably repurchase the stick one. Although the stick ones with fresh are quite melty, so maybe I take that back actually. But I think in general with lip balms I'm going to try and stick to stick formulas going forward. And the last three lip balms that I used were from this sample sachet, this pack of Dior lip glows. Um, so I had three of these left to use and I have now used them up. And these were actually quite generous samples because each of them individually was worth $2.90. I don't know if I would rush to buy a lip balm as expensive as the Dior one, particularly because they do come in all these colors and things now and I like a proper lipstick, so I feel like all I'm looking for a lip balm to do is actually nourish my lips. I don't necessarily want my lip balm to be adding color or anything, so I don't know if this is really the product for me, but if somebody bought me one or I got another sample, I would use it up. I didn't dislike it, I just don't feel that it's what I'm looking for in that kind of product. In total, that is seven makeup items worth $105.70 towards my reverse rouge. So let's move on to skincare, which is, as always, my biggest category. It's what I move through the quickest, it's what I use every day, regardless of whether I'm wearing makeup or styling my hair, I always use my skincare. So. Before I get into the full size products, I used six sachet samples. These are, the first three were from Charlotte Tilbury. It was a little set of three with her day cream, night cream and eye cream. Absolutely fine. If I got more samples, I would use them up, but I don't think I would go out and actually purchase this as much as I adore the packaging. I didn't fall in love, so. But it gave me another $3 towards my reverse rouge. Then I also had a serum sachet that I used up. Again, fine, but... All you can really tell from a one use sachet is whether you like the formula and whether you are allergic to it, you don't obviously see results. And I thought the formula and texture was fine and 
you know, I didn't seem to be allergic to it. This doesn't achieve anything to tell me if it's worth investing in, but it did give me another dollar towards my reverse rouge. I used up an SPF sashi sample. Fine, probably wouldn't repurchase it, but it's another dollar. Lastly, I used up this Clinique sashi sample, which was their moisturiser with a retinol through it. Again, what can you tell from one use? It was fine, it didn't seem to irritate my skin, but I don't think I would rush to purchase it either. That is six sashi samples worth six dollars to kick us off. To go into the actual products that I used up. So I used two cleansers up. First of all, I used up this little sort of deluxe sample size of the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Makeup Makeup Remover. Four dollars and seventy-five cents towards my reverse rouge. I liked it if I got another sample I would use it up, but I didn't like it as much as my full size cleanser that I finished, which is this one, the Drunk Elephant Makeup Removing Cleansing Butter, worth $34 towards my reverse rouge. I absolutely love this. I would definitely repurchase this. I haven't because what I've repurchased is the Inky List Cleansing Balm, which is only $9.99, so it's obviously a much more budget friendly option. However, I opened this in January and it took me until the start of September to actually finish it up. So we'll see how quickly I actually go through the Inky List one. Having said that, of course, we were in lockdown for the first number of months and we're still wearing masks, etc. So I've probably not been wearing makeup as much this year as I would in other years. So I don't know if that's to do with the product then or the makeup or maybe a slight combination of both. What I really did like is that you get this spatula on the top and it's magnetised so you don't lose it, it sticks to the product and you just need so little of this. The first couple of times I used it I definitely scooped up a little too much but yeah I feel like the fact you're not putting like wet fingers into it keeps it cleaner, it me means you use less of it. I like that the spatula is magnetised so it's not on you to try and not lose it because if it wasn't I would definitely have lost it. It didn't irritate my skin, it took off all my makeup. This is just like all round a 10 out of 10 product. However, the only drawback is that it is $34 or whatever it is in pounds. So it is a lot of money for a product that is literally taking your makeup off your face and then, you know, you're moving on. And I feel like in terms of my budget, if I am choosing where to spend money, I'd rather spend it on my serums and the skin gear that stays on my skin. So I ideally probably don't want to be investing in premium cleansers. If I was though, this would be the one. Um, and as I say, I'm going to keep an eye on how long it actually takes me to use up the budget version that I've replaced this with because, you know, occasionally you do find that what can seem more expensive on the surface can actually be a better value product in terms of how long you get out of it. And if I found that, then I would 100% repurchase this. And now that Drunk Elephants and Boots, like, if I got Boots vouchers or, like, there was bonus points or something that would give me the incentive to be able to justify this. Like, I would definitely, definitely repurchase this. I'm going to really miss this product. I finished up an eye cream. Uh, I'm actually really sad about this for different reasons. This is the Pi Echium and Argan eye cream and it was worth $54 towards my reverse rouge. I had this before, absolutely loved it, didn't irritate my skin, thought it was brilliant. And then obviously I was on my no buy and whatever and I had other eye creams so I asked for this for my birthday last year, as in in 2020. I was so excited to get it back in my life because I'd liked it so much and it actually really irritated my eyes. So I found I could only use this once a week. If I used this more than once a week, if I used it two or three days in a row, my eczema would all flare up. I don't know if my skin has changed or, you know, because it's a natural product, you maybe just are going to get a slightly different balance each time. I, I don't know, I can't explain it, but I was really sad. So I eventually got through it using it at a very, very, very slow rate, but I am quite glad that it's gone now because I feel like it just lasted for forever and, you know, I couldn't just kind of get on with it and use it. And every time I saw it, it was a reminder of how much I used to like that product and now I can't use it anymore. I used up two moisturisers. Uh, the first one is from Origins, it is their Ginseng Moisturiser. This was a little 30ml size worth $17.10. And I finished this up right at the start of the month, then went on to finish this from Darfan, which is their Hydra Skin Light. This is a 15ml worth $15.60. I liked both of these. They're both very lightweight moisturisers. They're both ideal for anyone with oily skin. I 
if I'm honest, I probably preferred the Darfan one. If I had to, to repurchase one, it would be this one. However, obviously the Origins one is much more budget friendly and I did enjoy the Origins one. I have another one of the ginseng moisturisers. I think it's a 15ml size. It's like a deluxe sample. I will use it up with absolutely no complaints. Probably going into the winter, I'll want something just a touch richer. But for summer, these two moisturisers have been great and I would use them both up again with no problems. I finished an SPF. It was this Supergoop Unseen Sunscreen. This was worth $10.20 towards my Reverse Rouge. I really like this. My only thing with this is that it has the sort of consistency of a makeup primer, which I think is, you know, it's meant to. I think that's the whole kind of selling point of it is why people like it. But it makes me a bit angsty because it spreads so well and so little seem to go so far in the way that a makeup primer that's a kind of radiant primer would do that I'm not convinced I was giving myself enough coverage of sunscreen to actually you know be like whatever it is you're supposed to use like a teaspoon per x amount of your skin or whatever whatever the measurement is I am absolutely positive that I wasn't naturally putting it on when I put this on because it spread so well it was so sort of emollient so then I would go in and top it up but I just then felt that I had more product than I wanted to have on my face because it did stay in that kind of primary way it didn't just sink into my skin so I did really like it and I would potentially buy it to top up with like if I was on holiday or something but I feel like for me I would rather use a normal SPF that sinks in and you know I can ensure that I'm using as much of it as I'm supposed to be using for the actual SPF benefits. I finished three face masks which have all been so nearly finished for so very long. First of all we've got the Kiehl's Calendula and Aloe Mask. This was worth $45 towards my Reverse Rouge and this is a little sort of five minute hydration pack. Um, which I did like. I don't know if I'd rush to repurchase it, but it's kind of one of those ones. I feel like if I'm doing a mask, I want a really sort of thick, rich mask, and this isn't that. You know, it's more of a sort of, you could put it on in the morning for a sort of five minute extra dose of hydration and then go, but that doesn't really fit my lifestyle. I am not a morning person, so I'm just definitely not going to do that. But if I was going for an event, I would probably use like a sheet mask that's more illuminating or something, so... Yeah, I don't know if this one really fits in with my lifestyle, but I did enjoy using it and if I got it again, I'd definitely use it up again. I just don't think I would purchase it again. Other one from Kiehl's that I've finished up is the Overnight Hydrating Mask. This one was worth $35 towards my Reverse Rouge. So I just basically use this in place of a moisturiser at night. It gives a sort of warming sensation to the skin, so I would be careful with it if you are on the more sensitive side. It's definitely something I would only use like once a week. But I did enjoy it, you know, and I, I felt that my skin was hydrated every time I used it. So I have no real complaints about it. Again, I don't know if I would rush to repurchase this. And the last mask that I used up is the Origins Mega Mushroom Mask worth $37 towards my Reverse Rouge. It was nice, it was soothing, it calmed my skin down when it needed to be calmed down. I don't know if I would rush to repurchase it again. I feel like my skin's kind of under control at the moment. But having said that, if it flared up and started to get really sort of red and raw, this is probably what I would go and purchase. So I would repurchase it again if the need arose, but I feel like my skin's a much more sort of calm, stable way than it was when I bought this in the first place. So I don't think I need to repurchase this. Facial sprays, I used up the Ren Pollution Defence Mist worth $5.64. I found this broke me out. So again, this was another product that it's only a 9ml. This was like a gift with purchase size. It's another one that I ended up using like once a week and took forever to finish because if I used it more than that and I kind of let it build up, I would see that my skin would start to react to it. So I did want to use it up for the sake of guessing my reverse rouge because it took me, I used up down to that mark before I realised, like consistently, before I realised that was what was breaking me out. So at that point I was like, well, I want to finish it up. So I did do that, but very slowly and obviously wouldn't replace that one. I used up a body scrub from Carita. 
it was absolutely fine. Now, I got this in a spa. I had a spa treatment and I bought the scrub and the moisturiser afterwards. This was worth $70.59 towards my reverse rouge and there is absolutely no way I would spend that kind of money on a body scrub ever again. So I did like it, but it just doesn't matter how much I liked it. You know, you put it on, you buff your skin, you rinse it off. Like, there is nothing that could make this worth that kind of money. So... There is absolutely no way I will repurchase that. Lastly, I've got three body moisturiser products. And the first one is signified by this Lush tin because it is one of the Lush massage bars, which I've used up to nothing. But if you are familiar with Wiki Magic Muscles, then the seeds that are left will, will signify the product to you. I've even got the smell of it still lingering around that tin, so... This is worth $12.95 towards my reverse rouge. I did quite like it. It's the sort of, so Wiki Magic Muscles is, as the name would suggest, a sort of deep heat muscle aimed at massage bar. And I bought quite a few of those massage bars. I get really into Lush for a while. I think the thing is, they are designed to be massage bars. You know, they're designed that they sort of melt on your skin and then you would really spend the time sort of working them in. Or ideally, somebody else would spend the time working it in. As a single person, Nobody's around to do that for me, so I have to do that. And it's fine, but I just, I kind of just want to spend like five minutes putting on my body moisturiser and working it in as much as a sort of normal body moisturiser requires to be worked in rather than like a massage bar that's designed to stay on the skin and kind of last for that purpose. So I don't think I'll be repurchasing any more of these massage bars once I've finished the ones that I have. Something I would probably repurchase. This was quite expensive. It's worth $59 towards my reverse rouge. It's the This Works Energy Bank Body Makeover and it's a body oil basically. And I really quite enjoy a body oil. It took me ages to use this up. You get 120 ml so you do get quite a reasonable size for your money. I don't know if I would rush to repurchase it. And I feel like in the winter I definitely want more like sort of nourishing things in this. I felt like this was quite lightweight. But then I liked it for that reason in the warmer weather because it would sink in really quickly. But I still felt that my skin was super nourished. I really liked this product. I'm not saying I would rush out to repurchase it immediately. And I've got other body moisturisers to use up. But it would be on my list of potential things I would repurchase. And then I should have probably done this one after the muscles one. Um, because the other moisturiser that I have used up is this one from this brand Hermana and it is their Tone Muscle Balm. So it was like, it was almost like sort of texture of a cleansing balm and I really, really liked it actually as a sort of muscle thing. It had sort of deep heat properties and whatever and I feel like those things can work but they're probably made to work by you spending the time massaging them in and use that action to soothe your muscles rather than just slapping the product on and leaving it. But I liked the consistency of it. It felt, because it was that sort of greasy um, cleansing balm sort of texture, you know, I felt like I could feel it on my skin. I felt like it was doing some good. I felt like I could feel the nourishment from it. It's not for anyone who wants something super, super lightweight. It's not that at all. But I did very much enjoy it and I would potentially repurchase this. And this one was worth $26 towards my reverse rouge. So my skincare totals are 20 items worth $432.83. So just to give you the totals, that was 20 items of skincare worth $432.83. 7 items of makeup worth $105.70 and six items of hair care worth $112. That means for September in total, I used up 33 items worth $650.53. If reverse rouge is $1,000 worth of stuff used up, this is like over halfway to reverse rouge in one month. Now, I feel like I do have to say I've had previous empties for, you know, the last couple of months that have been a little disappointing but that's just because I felt like so many things in this month's empties just they were so close for so long and then they sort of all finally came together so I'm not expecting to have anything like as exciting an empties as that in terms of the monetary value next month but just to give you a, a, a sneak peek we are three items into October's empties and you know it's looking like it'll still be quite a nice decent little chunk off of my overall totals. However, I did have quite a lot of things to add in in the month of September. Well, actually, 
most of them came from the month of July because the majority of it is, or pretty much all of it is birthday gifts. But I just hadn't actually done the paperwork. So I sat down and did the scary paperwork last month, added on the values and the quantities. And my next video will be a beauty haul where I'm sharing everything that I have brought in. And yeah, I hope you will enjoy that one when it comes. So thank you very much for watching this one. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video. Bye.